Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Down to Earth Astronomy. Now it's a long time since I've done uh, a proper mining guide so I thought it was about time that I did an updated version. So this is going to be my advanced um, miners guide where we're going to go over all the things you need to know if you want to be an effective miner in Elite Dangerous. Now I'm going to divide this video into three parts. In the first part here we're going to talk about the fittings, the setup, the modules you need depending on the size of ship and your budget. Um, and in the two other videos we are going to talk about uh, where to mine, how to locate a good spot for mining and also the best spot for your ship and for your loadout. And in the final video um, it's going to be a lot of small tips and tricks how you can optimize your mining and what you can do to, uh, to get the most profit out of, um, of, out of your mining. But let's get, um, let's get going and have a quick look at the setup. I'm here with my uh, Imperial Cutter which I'm using for mining. Um, you can use a smaller ship of course, but I'm going to go over the setup I have on this ship right now um, and also going to talk about how you can do it on smaller ships. Now, if we start with hard points here, I see I do not have any hard points because this setup is not really meant for that much combat to be honest. Um, so I just have the two D2 mining lasers. Um, I would say only go with the with a D2 mining laser or two D2 mining lasers if you have a very large ship like the Cutter. Simply because they take up a lot of power and they overheat very, very quickly. So often you would spend a lot of time waiting for them to cool down. So I would actually suggest only going with a single, if we go in here and go browse, we look at my mining lasers. I would often go with the 1D lasers on most ships and only go with a D2 if you can, if you absolutely can uh, power them. Of course they are faster but they also overheat uh, quicker. So for most ships if you're using either um, maybe you can do this in an adder, a hauler, um, an asp is actually a very very good ship for this. Um, you can make some decent money in an asp and I would normally only go with one D1 uh, laser on, even on the asp. When it comes to uh, utilities I just have chaff point defense just because defense. I mean, in case, I mean, you're going to be flying around with a very valuable cargo hold. Um, and from time to time, you might have to do, uh, to jump system to find a proper place to sell it. And sometimes pirates will take an interest in you. So it's nice to have the chaff and have the point defense just to give you that little bit extra defense. Then comes the core internals. Here you can see I've actually under spec'd quite a few of the modules. I mean, even though I could fit here, um, a 6A, I only got with a, uh, an 8, I only fit the 6A power plant just because we do not use that much power on the weapons because we don't have any weapons. Um, so maybe you need to need a little bit of power for the shield generator, but that's about it. And see, frame shift drive, I like to get that up nice and high because we're going to be flying with a heavy cargo and if you need to move it to another system to sell it, you want to keep that jump range up, which is also a good reason to uh, under spec some of your modules. And for the rest, I've just gone with the class. So that's uh, the core internals. Let's go for the optional internals. This is where it gets uh, gets interesting. And here I actually want to start from the bottom because the first and most important thing you're going to need on your ship is probably the refinery. If we go in here to the refinery, see if we can find them. Refiners, here we go. And you see the refiners of course come in uh, many shapes and sizes. But the important part is if you go over here, you can see it says bin counts. Now when you mine, you'll be mining different materials, and each material will go into a separate bin. Um, so if you say you're mining uh, painite, and some of the rocks will have a percentage on it, meaning that each fragment will, will have an average of that percentage of one unit of painite. So you need to fill up a bin with that material before you get one unit of, uh, of that material that you're mining. In some cases, one rock will not contain the needed amount of materials to completely create a whole number or it often wouldn't, won't have the uh, required number of materials to complete a whole number of fragments. You will have some leftovers after you're done with the rock. If you're then moving on to the next rock and that has some different combination of materials, you want excess bins. Most rocks will have between one and three materials. Um, so again, 
the more bins, the better. And I really think the bin count is uh, the most important factor here. So it's all about just getting as many bins. I think the max is 10 on a f uh, you can get. And then just get it for uh, as little power draw and as little weight as you can. I don't think these, these, power, these things as weight. So it's just a power draw actually. But get as many bins as you can afford. And again, I wouldn't use one of my highest utility slots for this. Not utility. Uh, internal slots for this. I would probably use the maybe the second highest, even the third highest. But try to uh, to spend a little bit of money on your refinery because you're going to uh, to like that once you get out in the belt. Then I would strongly suggest you can't do it without it, but I would strongly suggest that you fit a prospector limpet controller. What these are are you fill up your cargo hold with limpets. We'll get back to those in a bit, and you can then shoot them with these limpet controllers. You shoot them out of your cargo hold, and they will fly out and they will fly towards the rock that you're pointing at. And once they arrive at the rock, they will send you information back on the status on the rock. So how much materials are left in the rock and what type and what percentage of the different materials are in the rock, which can be very, very useful. It helps you a lot and it makes you way more efficient. Now, because I am on the cutter here, I've gone for a 3A. You see, this is actually one of my lowest slots here. And this can control two prospectors at a time. I mean, I can have drones flying out to two different rocks at a time. Um, but again, here, uh, I would really suggest using one of your lowest slots for the prospectors. Because you can do just fine with one. Um, one just one prospector is more than enough. Upgrading to a higher class just gives you longer range. Um, but again, one prospector is really enough. And you really, if you really want to, to leave out a module, this would probably be the first module that you would take off your ship. Because you can just fly up to the rock, shoot your lasers at it, see what comes out. I just think it's nice to know exactly what is the percentage and how much is left and when is the rock actually um, completed. But again, go for one with just one, or if you, in this case, which you have uh, a very big ship, you can go for two, um, two controllers, or, or two controllers, sorry, two, um, two limpets. You can see the one I have here, prospector. There we go, prospectors. You see, I can have max limpets, max active limpets is two. But if you go with many of the others, can only carry um, carry one. Okay, let's get back and move on. For some of you mid-range uh, slots, I would go for collector limpets. Now I've gone here because I have the two lasers. I also gone for two um, two limpets uh, collector limpet controllers. Each of these uh, class five A. I think they can control is it three. Two collectors. Yeah, so each of them can control three active limpets, and what they will do is, when you mine, they will they will fly out, and you will um, have them pick up the rocks and move them back to your cargo hatch and just deploy them into the cargo hatch. So you don't have to actually go around and pick up all the fragments yourself. These limpets will do it for you. This saves you a lot of time. Now the trick is to try and balance the amount of collector limpets you have with your lasers, because what I often find find is I the limpets can have a hard time keeping up with your lasers, depending on how you mine and, and the distance from your rock. And there's many, many factors here. But generally, I think the limpets having a hard time keeping up with the lasers. Um, so that's why I also up for only going with, with a low number of lasers here. Um, but you could also go with, with, with more powerful lasers and then have a longer range uh, prospector. So you could just sit and wait for the limpets to pick up the fragments while you are prospecting all the rocks in range, which should be plenty. But anyway, I really highly suggest that you go with, I uh, would say, probably at least two, um, but the more the merrier in this case. Then I have gone, and this is because there are different ways that you can mine. And what I'm testing at the moment is I'm trying to, to try and go out to the, the hazardous and the high resource extraction sites, where there of course will be uh, hostile ships, which is of course why I have gone with a fighter hanger, which allows me to, in case um, I do get attacked, I will let the crew member take over the ship, launch the fighter, um, and use the fighter to, uh, to take him down. Uh, so that's actually where my weapons go. You could have gone with weapons in uh, on the actual ship. Instead, that would often mean you would need a higher power plant or bigger power plant. It would make the ship heavier. So to keep the weight down, I decided to go with fighters and also because they are tremendously fun to fly around in. 
But again, if you're not mining in resource extraction sites, if you're just dropping out in the rings, um, you can just remove the um, remove the the fighter hanger and just go for more cargo hold, because of course you're going to need cargo hold. And as you can see here, pretty much any spare slot that you have, just fill it up with cargo hold. Um, this is also something you really need to try and optimize for as much room as possible. After actually opt for going with your highest slots for your cargo hold, because it really gives you Going up one level uh, doubles the amount that your cargo rack gives, so it really gives you a lot just using your higher level slots for this. But again, because I'm trying to use this with a more combat orientated uh, build, this uh, also has um, an uh, A8, an 8A uh, shield generator, just to give me that protection when I'm out there in the uh, asteroid fields and getting shot at. So I have enough time to take down my enemies before they manage to get through my shield. Um, if you're not mining in the resource extraction sites, if you would rather go out in the safe zones uh, between just drop out in a random place in the rings, you would. I would often downgrade this to a 6A or 6 whatever I have the money for. Just to have that shield in case you get pulled out, uh, you get interdicted, or if you bump into a rock, you don't want to have a hefty uh, fee for scratching your paint job. So, fit a shield, um, but you don't use a uh, one of your highest slots unless you're going into a combat area, in which case I would suggest it. But again, that depends on your ship and how much utility slots or um, optional internal slots you actually have for cargo holds as well. But I pretty much think that sums up the um, sums up the modules that you need uh, on the ship. So the last thing you're going to need is you're going to go into advanced maintenance, and you're going into restock. And in here, you now can see you have access to limpets, and one limpet, each limpet will take up one cargo space. And of course, you're going to use a limpet each time you prospect a new rock, and you're going to have the limpets um, fly around collecting uh, collecting rocks for you and depending on the controller you have they will have a different lifetime so the higher the, the rank the, the longer the lifetime you will have but they will also die occasionally when they fly into a rock so you will lose quite a few of these i normally go with um, a little over half cargo so i would often when i go out i would often go in this case with just around 200 so try to hit around um, around 60% of 60 to 70% of your cargo hold should probably be um, uh, be limpets when you move out. But you can try it out, see how it goes when you're out there. I mean, if you come home uh, with a, a half empty cargo hold because you ran out of limpets, then you should probably bring a few more. But if you have to go home because your cargo hold is full, but you still have plenty of limpets left, then Try to use a few more. That really depends on your mining style and 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 the belt and there's many factors and it'll also lock. I mean, sometimes even if you have the same number, you will have um, a lot of limpets if you are very lucky with your rocks, and other times you will run out because you're just unlucky and just uh, use all your limpets for prospecting. But I would normally go with around about 200, which I think is a uh, which is a good place to to be, and at least uh, if you have the same size cargo as I do. But again. Go for, when you're selecting your ship, go for a ship with uh, as many uh, optional internal slots as possible, because as you can see, that's really where you need to um, need to focus. I hope you like this video. Stay tuned for the two other videos, who, which will be coming up um, at some point in the future. Um, subscribe to the channel, like the video, and until next time, I'll see you guys in space.